So the number one rule is like, make sure that your quiz topic is specific to what you actually sell. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Reagan, and you've discovered Unicorns Unite. This is a podcast for freelancers, service providers, virtual assistants, and curious listeners who would like to experience the freedom and flexibility of working virtually. We're the magic makers, movers and shakers, and the real people doing the work behind the scenes of online businesses. Welcome to Unicorns Unite. Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to the show. It's Emily Reagan, your mother unicorn here. I've been working in the VA world for a while as a freelancer doing all of the things. And I recently had my friend Shanti Zach on an earlier episode. That was episode number 34. And it was called The Chef Who Conquered Copywriting and Quiz Funnels. I wanted to bring her back on the show to talk about her own course. And this is because I took it. It's called Grow With Quizzes, and it helps you package your unicorn skills into one fantastic service, which is all about writing and building quiz funnels. Shanti is the quiz creator for Jenna Kutcher, Amy Porterfield, Tarzan Kay. She is a copywriter, and she also does these quizzes. So I wanted to bring her back to talk more about the quiz funnels, what this looks like, what you need to know, and most importantly, so if you are doing quizzes on your own, you don't write a crappy quiz. Shanti is going to be sharing the five must-dos to write a successful quiz funnel. Okay, Uh, we've all taken those bad quizzes over on BuzzFeed that really didn't get us anywhere. Or have you ever started a quiz and you just keep clicking and the end is never in sight? The results just suck. Maybe there's no follow up. Maybe it wasn't shareable. All of those things I brought Shanti here to share. I have included a partner link to her signature program, Grow With Quizzes, because that opens tomorrow just for a week. This is your last chance to get in her program and work with Shanti in a group coaching situation, learn a lot from her, and then you could be writing quiz funnels confidently for your clients. So let's dive into the interview. Hey, everyone, we're here with Shanti. She's back. Say hello. I'm back. Yay. Hello. (laughs) We invited her back to the group to teach her five five must-dos to write a successful quiz, a.k.a. not make your quiz suck and make people actually want to take it, enjoy it, share it, maybe let it go viral, maybe make money. So that's why you're here. So let's dive in a little bit about uh, quiz funnels in general, because we didn't really talk about that last time we had you here. We talked about how you got your start how you fell into quizzes, but we didn't really talk about how to write it. Yeah, right. Exactly. So I'm going to share the Spark framework with you guys. And this is what's my like cheesy framework that I think allows you to create sparks, make sparks fly with your quiz takers and kind of create that sense of connection that is so powerful, especially today when there's just there's just so much out there. So if you can create that like personalized experience and make someone feel like they you get them, you're winning. So here's kind of how most people think about quizzes. Like they look at BuzzFeed as the number one role model and like those quizzes are kind of irresistible. We all love to take them, but they don't really give you any relevant, impactful information. Whereas a lead generation quiz, you need to give people that. You do, because you're asking for something that is really valuable to them. And that is, you are asking for their email, right? And that's valuable. But not only that, you're asking for their time and energy and attention. So the experience that you want to give people on the other end of your quiz is like, whoa, this was so much better than I thought it was going to be. I had no idea this person was going to like drop all these knowledge bombs and just give me this download of really actionable information. Um, So that's what I want for you. And that's what this framework allows you to do. Should we we dig right into it? No, well, I want to step back for a minute 
and tell everyone, because we do have some new people here. We have some new teachers that the name of the game for the online online business owners is to grow email list. It's kind of online business 101. So Shanti has become the expert in using an interactive way. What do we call it? What's the fancy word for interactive lead generation? Well, I like to say interactive empathy marketing. Okay. Which is more than just the quiz. It's like the whole funnel. Yeah. But, uh, that's my fancy, my fancy term. Yeah, you're good with the fancy words and the extra, the extra fanciness. But really, you're just asking, you're trying to get emails from people who are qualified to buy and might want to buy from your client. And this is the number one thing I am doing for clients is helping them grow their email list. Mm -hmm. behind the scenes, making a quiz and getting people to have fun and then submit their, their email is one of the fun ways to grow an email list and grow it fast. Shanti has helped tons of people either by doing the work or by coaching them come up with these quizzes that generate thousands of dollars, tons of leads. Like I was looking over your sales page. I'm like, dang girl, <laughs> amazing what you what you've helped people do it's crazy and I feel so I felt so small because I'm like oh I've gotten 2,000 leads but it it can it can be oh my gosh it can help out a business so much and especially if those leads are buying so this is what Shanti is doing so you can't just hop on to BuzzFeed and make a crappy quiz or you know what I mean like you can't copy the BuzzFeed quizzes you need to do something special with your clients. So Shanti is teaching us the framework to that. And I just wanted to throw that out there for some people who are new. Yeah, absolutely. And I think like there's a really common misconception when you're just getting started with online business that you should focus all of your energy on social, right? Yes. And like, it's worth saying that all of your social media reach and following combined still will pale in comparison to the reach that is possible with email marketing. So if your average open rate in email is like around 30%, whereas your average reach on social media is like two or 3%. Yeah. Good point. Right. So it's a lot of people don't know that. And they just think like, why is nobody engaging with my stuff on social? Well, it's because nobody's actually seeing it yeah. unless you're paying. Yeah. So yeah, email though, different story, totally different ballgame. And, and a quiz also, it helps you to get people excited to actually open your emails because their first impression of you is that you are a generous person who understands them. So why wouldn't they want to open your emails? Yeah, and you, they know that you're giving them value and things that help them and make them feel good. So let's pop, let's start with the Spark framework and teach everybody these five things that they need to have for their quiz to not suck. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So the first one is specificity. So the thing with a quiz is that you could have a really fun quiz that's like, which Outlander character are you or something? And if you run a business as a VA, like, what does that have to do with your business, right? So that's an extreme example, but people will do quizzes that actually aren't connected to what they sell. And so the number one rule is like, make sure that your quiz topic is specific to what you actually sell. Okay. That's part of it. And then another part of it is being specific in your messaging. So who are you talking to? You cannot talk to everyone. You can't help everyone. So you need to be clear on who you want to attract into your world and then call them out in the, in the title and description of your quiz. Your quiz does such a good job of this, Emily. You know what's funny though? I had a business owner. Oh, I need to tell you the story. Hang, hang with me. Had a business owner stumble on my quiz, and she <laughs> she was saying, um, "It's Patty." I I tagged you about Patty. She's like, "Oh, I just didn't like your results." And I'm like, "Patty, that's because it wasn't for you. It wasn't for entrepreneurs. It was for digital media VA." It's like she saw it out the context. So yeah, of course she didn't like her results. I mean, she she thought they were so well written. She was so impressed. I gave you all the kudos, 
But um, she uh, was just this is exactly the point. Like, you don't want to be attracting the wrong people with your quiz and getting the wrong type of results when it has nothing to do with them. So I just that was a you know funny like it happening on the flip side the bad way. <laughs> yes exactly and they're not for her so no no okay if she's not into them you really just want to narrow in on who are you talking to and that's who you're creating your quiz for and your offers for too yeah so being specific in your description and how you talk about the quiz and how you promote it and how you explain who it's for and that will go a long way because most quizzes are so generic yeah. and it's like people just see like, oh, I'm a business coach. So I'll do a quiz on like, what's your entrepreneur superpower? And they don't give any more context than that. And so it's like, it's, you're casting too wide of a net. Yeah. So you yeah. should focus in on what type of entrepreneur, who this is, any type of yeah, what do you want? How you can help them? What you're gonna, what you're gonna get them on the other side? Yeah, so all of those things tie into it. Okay, so that's specificity. Yeah. The second part of the framework is positivity. Yeah. So often we'll see those quizzes that are like, "What's missing in your love life?" or what is your number one weakness when it comes to Facebook ads or, you know, the types of quizzes that lead with the pain that their ideal quiz taker is experiencing. And those work and people will take them, but people will not share a quiz result that paints them in a negative light. Yes. Yeah. And they won't necessarily associate good feelings to the quiz creator. They'll think like this person just highlighted all the areas that I suck. If you didn't emphasize enough how you can help them to do better, then they're going to be left just feeling depleted and like, oh, what do I do now? So a lot of people teach like that angle when it comes to quizzes. But I think if you can lead with the positive and lead with the transformation that you make possible, then you are going to have so much more success when it comes to people sharing your quiz, when it comes to the feelings that people associate with you. Because even if someone is struggling and you know they get a quiz result that's like, there are all these areas where you could improve. They're still taking action, looking for solutions. They're still a go-getter and a really, probably a really caring, wonderful human being. So focus on those things first before digging into all the areas where like, hey, you could do better here, here, here. Mm -hmm. I can help you. But leading with the pain is uh, not the fast path to gains. Yes. That's my poetry for the day. That's what I do. <laughs> That's what I do in my quiz results is I focus on their strength and the positive side of, you know, what they're bringing to the table based on how they answer their questions. I'm not in there like, guess what? You're a spaz. You don't have your stuff together. You're a squirrel brain. This is where you struggle. No, I talk about the positives. And then later on, I, I offer a solution to help them, you know, bridge the gap where they want to be. But yeah, if I started mm -hmm. off like, well, this is what you suck at. I don't think anybody would want to work with me. Are there yeah. quizzes that really do that? I mean, I, maybe they just like lead with that. But are there quizzes that really do that? Yeah, it's super common. It's just it like it does work because we as humans will always be driven to figure out like what's wrong with us oh. or, you know, so people take them, but they don't really do the job of creating yeah. that sense of connection and trust. We like read the answers and then hide, hide close the tab. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. I'll just go on my way, merry way now. Yeah, but oh, that's interesting. I'm gonna. I feel like we need to start a bank of bad quizzes and good quizzes, 
inside your Facebook group with your students because I love seeing bad versions. <laughs> yeah. I learn a lot by what not to do, seeing other people screw up. <laughs> I started doing um, some like quiz review kind of videos where I find quizzes in the wild and then I just kind of analyze them uh-huh. and record a video of like everything that I would change. And they're really fun to do. Oh. Yeah. And where are we? A lot. Well, they're a bonus this year for. Oh. And. Yeah, I think you'll get them because you're going to get access to the most updated version of the program because you get yeah. lifetime updates. I so, love that. That's a, I love when I get a, lifetime access to a course because you know how it goes. I don't. Well, it's always getting better, right? Yeah. 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 Any course creator worth their salt is like constantly improving and refining things. So, yeah. So tell us about the A in Spark. Okay, the A is for actionable. So often people think that a quiz result is just you give somebody like a bit of information about their personality and then you send them off. But you have the opportunity to give them so much more than that, to give them some steps they can take based on your expertise that will help them achieve some quick wins and that will help them connect those quick wins to you as a leader and as an expert. So this is really where you can take your quiz to that place of like above and beyond the expectations that your quiz taker had so that when they, you know, they're reading through their results, they're like, whoa, this is actually valuable. Like I can actually take this information, apply it to my life. It's customized for me based on where I am. So people don't feel like they're just getting a one size fits all strategy. And that is when like minds are blown. So Your quiz is such a good example of this. You give people so much amazing information they can take action on, and then they feel like they can trust you. Yeah. And I follow your framework, and I do. I give them three steps, what to do next, how to start that ball rolling forward, and people love it. I'm surprised how many people like my results because I'm such a skimmer. Like, I don't, I'm such a skimmer. I mean, I like, I got four kids like, you know, yelling at me all the time, but I am amazed at how many people read through those results and are just like commenting and, and like shouting me out and, you know, just saying how much it resonated with them. And then of course I want them to take action and then join the Facebook group where they can learn more. But Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I wouldn't have thought to do all of that on like quiz results page because I've never really seen a good quiz. Yeah. <laughs> I took one that was horrible last week and sorry, Mary Lee, you told me it was good, but it, it you all you did was slide the slider over for the photos. Oh yeah. See those? Yeah. And I'm like, I, don't, I, I get to the point where I just, I don't know anymore. And I'm like tired of making the decision. Well, I don't know. Do I like that photo more or that one? I'm like, I don't even care. And I was like petered out on that one. I don't even remember what the results were, but I was like telling you a story. Okay, let's let's go on to the next one. R for Spark. R is for relevance. So this, I think it's a good example that you shared earlier about the person who's not in your target audience taking your quiz, not resonating with it because it wasn't relevant for them, right? So this is really all about understanding who you're talking to and knowing like what they need. So, so when it comes to action steps, for example, we can bring it back to that. You know that there's like, there's people who need to do like steps one through three of your process that you might have. Whereas there's other people who are maybe further along, they need steps four through seven. And so tailoring those results so that they're the most relevant for each different outcome 
is what helps people to feel like, how are you reading my mind? How do you know exactly what I'm going through right now? Yeah. And yeah, that level of relevance really just cuts through all the noise of all the lame quizzes out there and lead magnets that just don't connect with what you're going through. Yeah. Oh, that's good. And then in my results, I give people specific shop titles that I think are more relevant for each one. Like not everybody should do this. Not everyone should do that. So maybe that's how I bring relevancy to my quiz. Minus the fact of like marketing it to the right person, but I don't make it a one size fits all. It's very custom tailored to that person. Yeah. And I'm also kind of not really, I guess I think of relevancy in terms of like my journalism training too, but it's just something kind of like new. It's something kind of, um, I don't want to say it's like cutting edge, but a lot of it's like new to these people and it's relevant yeah. in that way. It's not, I'm not just like giving them old redundant information that's boring. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So that factors into it too. And that we want to be giving people something that they'll actually find interesting and useful. So the the better you understand your audience, the easier it is to do that. A quiz is also a tool that helps you to better understand your audience. But yeah, it's it's kind of an ongoing thing too that will evolve that you can always go and update and change to reflect what you learn. But relevance is so underrated and (laughs) really like even the word, it's like, is that relevant? And if the answer is yes, you're paying attention. And if it's not, you're like on to the next thing. It's way too noisy. We're not already not interested. Exactly. All right. Tell us about the K, the the last letter of your special fancy spark. (laughs) So the K is for knowledgeable. So too often you get a quiz, even if it's a decent quiz, you don't know who's behind the quiz necessarily. Yes. Right? Never. never. Like hardly ever. Hardly ever. (laughs) It's some 13 year old in the basement. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And, And this is so common. But if you just add a little section that introduces who you are, who you're, the brand behind the quiz, and explains why you're knowledgeable on this subject matter. Why are you the expert? Mm-hmm. Then when you show up in that person's inbox, they're going to be expecting you and they're going to know who you are. Yes. So being the expert and not being afraid to introduce yourself right off the bat is essential. Hey, this podcast is sponsored by my very own GIF and sticker making workshop. Turn your clients videos into GIFs, design branded stickers for Instagram stories, and master the art of making your own GIF for promo emails. This is fun unicorn magic that we can do behind the scenes easily for our clients. The workshop is one hour, just $17.99. The link is in the show notes or go to emilyreaganpr.com slash GIF workshop. That's G-I-F workshop. Back to the show. I took your advice when I was looking at a peers quiz and I realized like, I don't, you're not on here at all. And it doesn't come natural to a lot of us who are behind the scenes. But when you're thinking in terms of clients and other people, it's glaringly obvious. You're like, you're not on here. I need to see your face. I need to know a little bit about your story. I don't want it to be all about you, but you need to start positioning yourself you know, more front and center. So you're right. So I do open the email from you next time. And I remember who you are. But yeah, I was surprised that people weren't adding that on their own. And that's because they hadn't taken your training. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. You know what, the replay from the, the training that I did earlier last week, it's still up. And I teach the spark framework. And I give examples for each step. So I'm going to like give you the link. Okay. Well, that's so nice of you. Just and then if you like, want to share it. Okay. If they just want to like skip even to that section of it, it's going to go into more detail. Okay. Thank you. 
I think it will really hit home with all of you of what you're trying to do behind the scenes with your clients and then kind of put the put those, like goggles on and look at look at things differently. Probably a lot of things apply with the spark method when you think about marketing, but thank you for sharing that. I'll definitely post it in here. And yeah. So okay. I'll tell this to you right now. <laughs> there we go. Okay, thank you. And I think I'm going to wait till we're done talking because if I post it when we're live, uh, I will turn myself on every time I turn myself on and double windows. And, and Oh, yeah, I know. I do that, too. Yeah. So how many quizzes have you written? Oh, my gosh. I think like over 40. OK. All right. Do you do you like just to get excited about them? <laughs> yeah. I mean, every single one is so different. That's crazy. Yeah. 40. It's around there. I am getting to the point after taking your course where I start working with clients and I just like the quiz comes together. I'm like, we need to do this. I don't know with what time, you know, but we have to do this. And I have one client. So you teach two ways to do it. Well, you teach a lot about the personality quiz, but there's also a way to do it where it's more of a, uh, what's the other way where it's like a scorecard? What is that called? Yeah, well, there's like assessment and then school. Yeah. 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 I see myself actually doing an assessment one pretty soon for a client, which makes me kind of excited just to try something new. But I just, I have so many ideas when I work with my clients and I get excited. And now I know that after taking your course, I can offer this and not bat an eye. Like I know exactly the process to walk through. So I'll get success with them, especially the first time I'm doing it um, and charging because I'm yeah. never doing that free. That was a lot of work and I will never, ever, ever do it free. So what do you tell people to charge for quizzes? Oh, well, like I say, if you've never done one before the first one, you should still charge at least 1500. It's a lot of work. It, it is. is. Does that include setting up Facebook ads? No. No. (laughs) Let's just clarify that. Yeah. (laughs) No, our clients come to us and they want it all. Yeah. They want every single thing included and then they surprise us. But you do have to be very um, explicit and say what that does not include. Yeah. And I want people to, like any of my students, to be raising that price, like just continuously as you get more experience. So that ideally you're at like at least a 5k price point, yeah. if not more. How long does it take? That's amazing, first of all, and well worth your time because how long does it take you to write a quiz? It's not just something you get done in a day. It depends. Like I can write a quiz in a day. <laughs> <laughs> not me. <laughs> but it's not gonna be like the the masterpiece that I necessarily want it to be. Yeah, but I have done it, and that's just from like so much practice, right? Yeah. But I just also spent four over forty hours on a client's quiz recently. Oh, you did! Wow. So like, and that's just because it was super, super detailed and really epic. I mean, each Ooh. result was like five thousand words. Oh my gosh. So you can like create the most complicated quiz in the world, or you can keep it simple. There's no, there's no rules. There's so many different options. So tell us about your course and what it all, what exactly it includes, like what you walk us through. Well, so quizzes are amazing, but, (laughs) but, but they're not everything, right? So they're a way for people to come into your world, to establish a sense of trust and connection. But then what happens, right? So I teach the whole quiz funnel system so that they come into your world and then they get your welcome sequence and they then get placed into whatever sales sequence. And you learn all of that in the course. So you learn email marketing, basically, which yeah. is a skill that, you know, it's going to apply well beyond your quiz funnel, but it is essential to the success of your quiz funnel. So you learn how to sell in email, 
and also how to just build relationships in email. You learn a lot about copywriting, really. And I also have a part of the program that teaches about like traffic generation. Yes. So Facebook and Instagram ads, like how are you going to drive traffic to your quiz and get people into that funnel? So, so it teaches that whole system. And then in addition to that, we have a lot of different live elements where I'm there helping you work through the whole process and answering questions and giving you feedback. I added mindset coaching sessions this year because I think that the one thing that holds people back is just like procrastination, fear of showing up, all of the mindset stuff that we all deal with. Your course made me dig deep into my business, my offers, my target, my ideal customer avatar, my, you know, my target customer. It made me really get deep so I could write better. And so I could write a quiz that led those people to me. And I was amazed at the whole, the whole package. And then it kept going <laughs> with the integration because you, you've got help yeah. to do some of that, which is yeah. awesome because we can't all do it all. And you brought in Facebook, social media ads to help. So it was the total package. So this is something that if you take a course like this, you could turn around and have the framework and the systems and the inside knowledge to offer this to your clients and not be working for $20 an hour. <laughs> With quizzes, it's all value-based pricing. So if I charge, if I do do a quiz in a day, like I used to do these day rates a lot where I would charge people like three grand for six hours of work. And I would just spend that time like focusing on writing their quiz. Often I wouldn't even be able to finish it. I would leave like fill in the blanks parts for them. But like, what's that? 500 bucks an hour? Yeah. So that's what's possible. All I'm saying. Yeah, it is. That and more. Yeah. And that's kind of cool. Thank you for sharing us the insight to that. Because eventually when these unicorn VAs get their foot in the door and they start working, they easily realize, quickly realize they're just swapping. You're, you're just trading time for money. And it's not, yeah. it's, it's not at the beginning, you're like, oh God, I'm making so much money. And then you start to realize how much you're helping business owners move the needle forward and make them money. And then it gets weird because you want to charge more. And I just feel like if you could get in here, if I could have taken your course seven years ago and jumped in when my mind was blown by the whole online formula, I would have fast tracked so much faster. (laughs) Lack of better word. But you know, I would have skipped the years of doing the hourly grind, which is good. I'm grateful for it. It got me to where I'm at. But I feel like if anyone is into writing, interested in email marketing, like this would be the fast track, the ticket to jumping ahead and not having to do the hourly stuff. I just have to say that. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And I'm also an affiliate. Yeah. But honestly, you just you gave so much away in that course that like people can skip years ahead. Years. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And I think like it's interesting when you're just getting started in the online world because you don't really necessarily know what's possible until you're interacting with other people who are doing it. Yes. And who are like who've been at it for a while and who've reached a certain level. And then you're like, wait, wait, if they can do that, then can I do that? And the answer is yes. And like we had this, um, I don't know if this was in your round or if it was the round before where we had my coach, who's a sales coach, she came on and did a live training on high ticket selling. And she was talking in this training about selling like $50,000 coaching packages. Ooh, wow. Yeah. And the people in the group were like, what? I didn't even know that was a thing. And she, like, here she is. She's like, oh yeah, this is a thing it's possible people pay this. And so if it's possible for her, they it's awakened something in them. that was like, yeah, possible for me. And then you just accelerate so much faster. 
Yes. And it is kind of a mind mindset shift you have to make. Like people are willing to spend money on this type of stuff to move their business forward. And you have to be willing to do the same for yourself, but you do not have to be stuck with the smaller business owners who don't see the value in that either. But I feel like this could be a whole nother training we talk about. <laughs> I am like really curious. Um, Cause at the copywriters conference where we got to meet, I was just fascinated when people are getting the 50 grand contracts for copywriting. Like this is a whole new world for me. And I know it's there. And I want to know how to get into it, but it was eye opening for me and really exciting because I know how much brain power and talent goes into behind the scenes and like people don't give it away free. Like seriously, okay? yeah. that was my Valley girl moment. <laughs> like seriously, hey, Claudia, Claudia had a couple questions. Claudia is one of my go-to all-stars. And I do want to say I've had a couple students buy the course already and they're all the ones who are the fast trackers. They're all the ones who've got their eye on the prize and they're going for it and they're committing. And I guarantee you it takes one client and you could pay back this course and you oh, yeah. have a quiz for yourself. And yeah. you, like Shanti said, you don't do it for free out the gate. Like you start charging out the gate. So easily pays back for yourself. So I hope you see that possibility. Okay. Can you see Claudia's questions over there in the chat? I can see Facebook user. Okay. Yeah. That's where, where the content from the results comes from. Um, example, how to create a quiz about personalities. If I do not know anything about personalities. So we teach that in the program and there's different ways of going about it. Really. It comes down to understanding either your audience or your client's audience. So typically what I like to do is if I'm working with a client, I'll ask them, okay, tell me about the different types of people that you attract. Like, do you attract the, the go-getters and the super outgoing types? Or are you more speaking to like the shy and analytical people? And sometimes they are speaking to both. And so I just start to do the research and, and formulate an idea of who they're already attracting. Yeah. Because like, I'll even use myself as an example. I don't typically attract like super analytical, really like scientific data driven type personalities necessarily. Oh, really? Why not? <laughs> I don't know. Where, where are they? Um, I But I do attract lots of like really outgoing and sweet, helpful people who like just are so generous and kind. And then I also attract lots of like the bold go-getter types that don't want to take no for an answer. And so I can look at my business and see the different personalities that I attract. Yes. And then once I have that information, I can start looking at different personality frameworks to try and get some inspiration. Yes. So Linda and Wendy, who were in the course last time with Emily, they are doing a training on the DISC personality assessment. Mm -hmm. And so DISC is like just a way of looking at personality types that it sort of simplifies everything because there's only four types. I really love how Linda and Wendy like put this all together because I, when I do it, I like to look at the Enneagram as my framework. What and are then, you on the Enneagram real quick? I'm a three. Okay. Yeah. Typical three. And the Enneagram is much more complicated than mm -hmm. the disc because there's nine types, right? So Linda and Wendy simplify it. Um, but I do teach sort of my process for understanding who like individually based on the business, who are you typically attracting? Yeah. Your course helped me figure out kind of reverse engineer everything. Like I start with my results and I work backward and it really made me kind of think, well, what are those results? What are the commonalities? And Claudia, that's kind of how you do it. And there's several different ways. So mine was more, it didn't start off personality based, but I learned through your coaching that I had too many options. <laughs> like I just had too many options and it was easier if I did simplify it. I have to say that was like my biggest lesson, which Sounds so cliche, but it was so true and things got easier. But I started with this like 
backwards. So mm -hmm. um, Claudia also asked, if my client is the expert, is the client who tells you the result categories? Claudia, I don't know if I, do you get that? I don't know if I understand. Well, I think if, if I am understanding correctly, it's like, how am I supposed to know what the action steps are or the information is because I'm not the expert. My client's the expert. Yeah. I think that's, I think you're right. But this is like basic service provider copywriting work. Like you pull it out of them. Right. And then use yeah. what you know, and you serve it back. Or yeah, that? exactly. Like you're going to be having that one-on-one -on -one conversation with the client and saying like, okay, so based on this type of person who you can help, what do they need to know to take the next step? And then you're just going to sort of organize that and put it into the quiz result in a streamlined way, yeah. but they're going to give you that information. Yeah. So how do you do it with your clients? Is it like a Zoom call? Do you have a survey? Like what's the logistic behind that? I'm sure there's a lot of back and forth. Yeah, I will typically schedule like a 90 minute kickoff call where I just ask them questions and get really clear on who their audience is. I also have like a bit of a survey that I send them yeah. that is, it's more basic, but it also gives me a sense of just, yeah, who they're talking to and what what results they want to offer. And I also tend to work one-on-one -on -one in industries that I have some understanding of because it just makes it so much easier. Yeah. So like if I work with someone in um, like the mindset world, I have a pretty good understanding of mindset stuff. Okay on my own. So it's easier than if I can get their take, combine it with what I know, and then that speeds up the process. Okay. So if you're like thinking about niching, you want to look at like, what do I already know? Yeah, that's a good place to start. That's great advice. I um, was going to say that I like to get my clients talking because usually they're a little bit more forthcoming. So that 90 minute kickoff call is awesome. I do know clients get turned off, Claudia, if you send them this big survey and you make them do all the work and that kind of can start off bad. But, you know, you do need to clarify things down the road. But there's probably also points in time when you're creating a quiz for people where you have to check in because you don't want to just go off in the 90s with TV characters and they don't like that, <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. I just put together kind of a loose framework before I get started. And I say, okay. like, these are the action steps that I'm going to give them. And this is the overview. And then if they approve that, then it's yeah. like, okay, moving on. Yeah, that's good. Monica asks, what program do you use to create quizzes? I know there's a few out there. What do you recall off the top of your head? I like interact um, out of all the different options. They're really easy to use and affordable. So that one's my favorite, but there are definitely lots of options. That's what I use as well. And I think you're an affiliate for interact, right? So if you want to hit me up with your link, I can share it. If anyone is feeling motivated to go play. I even got my, my very own discount code, which I'm pretty excited about. Ooh, you deserve it. Yeah. You totally deserve it. The like, discount code is Quiz Queen. It's so funny. Are you kidding? Oh my god! Did you know they have? Did Linda tell you how they have a podcast? Yeah. Starting. Are you going to be on it? I hope so. Yeah. Can I tell you a little um, Shanti story? Ooh. I um, I've been doing some podcast pitching for some clients, and I have said I like to work with you know peers who are not peers, but like a little bit farther along. And I have been stalking what podcast you've been on. <laughs> and I, I'm using that as a way to help find like good podcasts for other nice. people to get on. But, but I can't help but think about you like with interview opportunities, like we should get you on here. So anyway, that's why I hooked you up with Patty because Patty has the podcast. Amazing. You'll, you'll talk to her after the launch. I told her you're in the middle of the launch. So, <laughs> um, is there anything else people should know about the, um, the course here because I know I've kept you longer than I intended just that there are so many bonuses <laughs> like I just kind of went out of control 
and tell, added so many bonuses. You do. Tell everyone about the bonus that is for the service providers who want to learn this and then will multiply it for their clients and be the ones to make money from it. Yeah. So I basically have this choose your own adventure bonus that you can either choose like the persuasion masterclass, get better at copywriting or the service provider masterclass. That's like all about how I went from charging 500 bucks for a quiz to like upwards of five, 10,000. And I walk you through how I create a proposal and how I sell it yes. and all of that stuff so that when you go to do the same, you have a sort of a template to work off. Yes. That is, I think, the most amazing bonus because people never talk about the logistics of the backside. So, okay. You have questions for Shandi. I know some of you are going to catch this when you get off work. Please pop into the comments, ask some questions. We'll try to help you out. If you're thinking about taking this course and you have questions for me, I'm here too. You're, when does it close? When does enrollment close? Tonight. What time? At midnight Pacific. So 3 a.m. Eastern time after you're done watching Hulu. No, I'm just kidding. People wait to the last minute, which don't wait to the last minute. Shandi's not going to let you in tomorrow. We don't know when you're going to open it again. Like now is your opportunity to jump into quiz writing because it's a service that business owners need. There is so much work out there. So many business owners I see in all of our groups saying like, I don't know how to do it. I need help. And we already know that they can't do it all and they're going to hire it out. So this could be an awesome way for you guys to get out of the hourly the hourly grind. So yes, absolutely. I would love to have you. Yeah. And one, th I have to say one thing I like about your course is there's not thousands of people in it. You don't get lost. You, yeah. get, you get those days with Shanti. You actually looked over my quiz and gave me feedback. I really love the get her done days. I'd never done that before. And I was so productive. So all of that is a good perk too. And grow with quizzes. So use my link here, and then um, yeah, I hope I see you inside her Facebook group because I'm. I hope so too. Yeah. Thank you for having me. All right, thanks, Shanti. Take care. Bye. Bye. All right. I hope you learned so much. I just love Shanti to death. I think she's great at what she does. She's so talented and I love that she is sharing with the world. Go check out the show notes to learn more about her online program, Grow With Quizzes. And I have a link there just for you. You could also find Shanti on Facebook and Instagram, and I highly suggest getting in her magnetic field. All right. That's all I have for you today. I'll see you next week on another episode of Unicorns Unite. If you're ready to learn the digital marketing and social media skills that will get you hired online, head over to vacrashcourse.com where you can learn about my five-week program, the Digital Media VA Crash Course. Small business owners and solopreneurs want to hire someone who gets it and who can help them implement just about everything. They're looking for a magical assistant who does it all. With my comprehensive training, you can get your foot in the door and become a unicorn. Check out vacrashcourse.com. Their email list, uh, oh, their email, their email list. See, we're both, <laughs> this is like the witching hour for mom. Um, Somehow we'll make dinner. Dinner will happen. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. An hourly rate. Well, how do I say that smart? Help me. <laughs> now it's not time for popcorn. I'll give you a little bit soon. Okay, go back out there. Ooh, I want popcorn. Yeah. Um, I think she's... No, 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 no. Okay. Anyway, that's probably a good time to wrap it up.